Welcome back YouTube. Today I'll be sharing with you guys my two favorite exercises for forearms, why I like them, and some of the important technique cues that I use to get the most out of your workouts. Now, forearms are probably an afterthought for most people with respect to their training. And I'll say that for most people, you probably don't need to train them much from a muscle building perspective with some direct isolated volume, but from the perspective of improving strength in the elbow and wrist joints, I think it is worth adding in some targeted volume for them. Anecdotally, I've found that if I use these exercises as a light warm-up drill before my upper body workouts, my presses and pulls tend to feel a lot better from an overall stability and strength standpoint, which allows me to push a lot harder on those exercises. Now, I've used these exercises personally a lot in the past to add size to my forearms, but I do understand for a lot of people out there, getting thicker forearms is pretty low on their priority list, and they do wind up getting a fair bit of stimulus from your basic pulling and curling exercises. So before we get started, I wanna know, do you train forearms directly? And if so, what are your favorite forearm exercises? Drop me a comment below to let me know, and please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really do appreciate all of your support so far in helping this channel grow. There's been a lot of growth over the past month alone, and, it, and it's all because of the little actions on your part to show you support. So we're just about wrapping up this series on best exercises and I hope you've been enjoying it as much as I've enjoyed creating it so far. And if you're new here and this is your first video, I'll leave a link to the full playlist of best exercises in the description box below and in the pinned comments so you can jump through and watch the rest of this best exercise series. Okay, so let's start looking at the exercises, shall we? The main exercise that I use for forearms are a variety of wrist articulations. This is actually a combination of four exercises, so you can do them all separately if you wanted to. Forearms themselves appear as a pretty boring muscle group with people thinking of wrist curls and extensions as the main exercise to choose where you're flexing or extending the wrist. Now, those exercises are useful and they do train the muscles of the forearm directly, but they also neglect to address some of the articulations that the forearm muscles are responsible for. Neglecting this whilst emphasizing other areas can set you up for a lot of issues down the road where you lose strength and mobility over time, which can start to make other movements less accessible to you. So one thing that I've found in people who often complain of wrist pain when doing things like push-ups is after a few weeks of adding in this exercise, their wrist pain improves dramatically. There could be a lot of things going on here, of course, so I'm not gonna say this is the only thing that you need to be doing to fix your wrist or your elbow pain, but it does make a lot of sense to me as it takes both the muscles and tendons through a larger range of motion, which is important from a strengthening and tendon stiffness point of view. So all you really need to do is grab a broomstick or any object really, and you could even use something like a hammer or an adjustable dumbbell loaded on one end if you have that available. And all you're gonna do is take your wrist through as much ulnar deviation, supination, pronation, and radial deviation as possible under control. You will find that your strength differs between each movement, so do bring your arm up higher or lower on the object or change the load if you're using weights to accommodate for this difference between uh, strength in each position. When you're doing this exercise, try to keep your body as static as possible. You'll find yourself wanting to kink and rotate all over the place to compensate for different strength discrepancies. So you might even want to try to experiment with resting your elbow onto a bench of some sort for support. Just make sure it doesn't limit how much movement you're able to get from the exercise at the wrist. Now, having the elbow bent or outstretched doesn't make a humongous difference overall, so go for comforts and convenience more than anything else when you're setting up this exercise. All right, so that's exercise number one. Well, actually, that's exercises one through four, but we'll count as one. So exercise number two is the wrist roller. Now, there are actual devices out there that are available for this exercise, but you can simply do what I do, which is attach a band or a chain or some kind of rope to a barbell and roll away. This is a really old school exercise that used to be commonly found a lot in gyms decades ago, but it was discarded for no real reason whatsoever 
other than people just choosing to neglect forearm and wrist work over time. You can do this with your arms outstretched in front of you like I am here, which will also train the shoulders and upper back in an isometric contraction. Or you can do it off a barbell, which will remove the need to stabilize through the shoulder girdle and won't generate as much fatigue through the upper body at all, allowing you to focus more work through the forearms. I personally do a blend of both, mixing it up every few weeks or every few sessions. Now, the reason why I like these so much is they emphasize the wrist extensors, which tend to be undertrained. When you think about all of the gym exercises we're doing, we're really being forced to grip tight, whether it's squeezing a handle and doing a dumbbell press or actively flexing in a curl or a pull motion, whatever it is, the forearm flexes here receive a lot of both isometric or static contraction stimulus, as well as actual loaded movement through an active range of motion. On the other hand, the extensors on the back of your forearms here, they receive very little direct stimulation, whether it's through isometric exercises or through taking the muscles themselves through an active contractile range. So I think it is worthwhile adding in some extra volume here. The wrist roller is a truly humbling exercise and will reveal a lot of weakness and poor endurance in the wrist extensors. Instead of doing it for reps with heavy load, although you can do that, I normally do it for time, aiming for sets of around 30 to 60 or 90 seconds. Be warned though, it's gonna create one disgusting pump through the forearms and you probably find it hard to do much else with your hands and arms for a little while after. So, there you go guys, my top two movements for forearms. I hope you enjoyed this video and are going to give these exercises a shot. If you have any other questions on forearm training, please do drop me a comment below. And if you're still here watching this video, it means you've watched this all the way through to the end and I greatly appreciate that. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.